What's up, everybody? Hey, guys, how you doing? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. It's time, guys. Hi. It's me. I'm off center. Will, how you doing? You hot? You a little hot down there? Your 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 mic is your mic is effed right now. <laughs> must be it must be the heat. It is. Oh, there we go. Hi, I'm, can you hear me? Hello, everyone. Yes, I can hear you so yes. loud because I forgot to mix you in my headphones. Comedy uh, takes sacrifice, and sometimes that means knocking your mic cord out of the mic. <laughs> ah, okay, that's uh, under- understandable. Yes, but yeah, no, it's it's freaking hot outside, and and we had company over last minute, and I had set up the backyard, and I, I almost collapsed from right. doing it. People, yeah, man, in this economy. <sighs> anyway, uh, it is hot. Uh, luckily, yeah. I haven't had to go outside too much. I will say though, th- this where where this little studio, the air conditioner does not get nearly cold enough. Oh. Yeah, I'm doing this in a room that does not have air conditioner, but it has a ceiling fan and one of those small Dyson fans blasting Oof. cold air at my legs. Um, so that's it. But I can keep cool with this uh, one of two Wolf Den uh, drink things. Is, is Travel here? Travel, Travel's uh, girlfriend, wife made that? Yeah, uh, partner. Partner? That's what yeah. I should say. Uh if Travel's here, I got a question. Can you put that in the dishwasher? I don't think you can. Mine, mine has gotten a little gross. Or I thought I did. Have... I think it might have been bubbles at the bottom, but I freaking drank out of it yesterday. I looked at the bottom and I was like, oh. <laughs> That's why I'm drinking yeah. out of, I'm drinking out of this today. <laughs> I, know, I hand wash mine just to be safe. I always hand wash mine, but uh, yeah. yesterday I saw a little something happening at the bottom. <laughs> it scared me. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's hot. It's yeah. only getting hotter until the world ends, and then uh, that's yes. and then and then goodbye, everybody. Yeah. Um, but until anyway. then, we have a Wolf Den podcast to <laughs> do. Until then, we have work to do. <laughs> uh, today, listen, it's been a rough few months for gaming news. Nothing's yeah. going on. So today, I want to take a minute to talk about the analog pocket and the updates that have come to it. However, I am doing a whole ass video on the main channel on uh, a, a portion of this update. Uh, so uh, I guess I'll go more in depth later. Oh yeah, I got mine right here too. Did you? Yeah. Now you did the update. But I did, did you, the update. I did didn't, you do I didn't go the, any further? Oh, you I, dumb! I didn't You're go stupid. any further. No. So I think man. this is a good opportunity uh, to talk to you about that, and also to explain to the audience the difference between the analog the update that analog is talking about versus the other things you can do with it. <laughs> yes. The things that it allows you to now do, which is yes. what my video is going to be largely about. Yes. But we also have to talk about, uh, some stuff added to the new, to the game services, some free games yes. you can get or included games, but also we're going to talk about PlayStation update of the PlayStation five with some things yes. that yes. I can't talk shit about anymore. Also <laughs> Mario Kart, is getting a DLC update. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are mad about Grand Theft Auto because uh, they dare to uh, put a woman in the spotlight. I uh, know what's next. <laughs> and some other thing, another uh, 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 PlayStation streaming device, kinda, and a Logitech <laughs> streaming device, kinda, yeah. and some other faff crap. Yeah. Um. So there's a lot of stuff. But first, yeah. why don't we talk about the the our favorite? What thing Bob to do. got wrong on last week's Nintendo podcast? Of course, let's talk Fuck. about that. Was that the tier list episode? Uh, yes, that was the tier list. Oh, episode. there's probably a lot. Well, to be fair, I didn't. I haven't had a chance to go through the whole thing. Okay, but that's okay because 25 minutes in, 25 that, minutes. That in, took Bob, a while. It took a while. You said that F Zero was a big deal because it had quote the super effects chip. Is that wrong? Now, yes, because F Zero <laughs> came out in 1990 with a launch title for the Super Nintendo, or in 1990 that would be the Super Famicom. The Super FX chip did not come out until 1993 with the launch of Star Fox. So what? So what is F Zero? Is, is a it big Mode deal Seven? Mode Seven. Yes. Ah, 
Fuck. It exclusively featured a uh, heavy use of mode seven. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Shit. I almost, I want you to know, I, I want you to know, I almost DM'd AJ, because I wasn't on last week, but I almost DM'd him with stuff you got wrong <laughs> on the previous Nintendo podcast, which is really just about uh, Bayonetta's ownership, which apparently a lot of people are confused by. And it's We figured it out. We clear. figured it out after yeah. a minute. And it is not clear. But, no. I, I yeah. could have sworn I played the second one or I got the second one on a Games with Gold or something. Uh no, because the, so the first one was published by Sega for the right. 360 and the PS3. We actually have it on 360, like yeah. physically. Yeah, and it was pro- it was probably a Games of Gold on 360 at some point because that's how I played it. Yeah, so Sega, oh, I think technically owns Bayonetta. Nintendo just funds uh Bayonetta two and three, and therefore because they are putting their money into it, they have exclusive console rights. You know, so what? they I, don't they don't I, actually own Bayonetta. I think what happened was they released um, both one and two on the switch. And at the yes. time, instead of just playing them on the switch, I played them on Xbox because we already had it. Mm-hmm. And, and and I only played the first one. Uh, yeah. And that's why I thought they ported them because I'm stupid. Uh, is that the only thing I got wrong was the mode seven thing on on uh, on. Well, again, I haven't I got up to Pokemon and uh so i'm not finished with the episode but yeah that was that was the big thing that jumped out at me okay all right well that's that you know what i, I don't feel too bad about that <laughs> um but we gotta talk about the games you can get with all your yes. uh, streaming services for all of the various things that you might have yes uh it's the start of the month which means you get free games if you are subscribed to playstation plus or xbox live gold and if you're subscribed to playstation extra or premium and game pass you get even more. So let's start. See, the pro- this is a problem I have with uh, the way PlayStation named their subscription services because it's all PlayStation Plus, yeah. and it makes our job a little bit more confusing. Yes, you're absolutely right. So, okay. So we'll start with PlayStation Plus Essentials. Now, right. these are the free games that you get, that you download to your console for free if you are subscribed to any level of PlayStation Plus. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. This is the traditional yes. PlayStation yes. Plus games. That's yes. what I'm trying to okay. say. Okay, okay. Regardless of what tier you have, you get these games for free with yes. your included with your subscription. Yeah, so if you just want to play uh, games online, like you want to play Call of Duty, you have this. Yes. So, starting today, because it's the first Tuesday of the month, you get... Yakuza Like a Dragon on PS4 and PS5. You get Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, the cross-gen Ooh. deluxe bundle That's on PS4 sick. and PS5. Yeah. Uh, and you get Little Nightmares on PlayStation 4. That's great. Yeah. Uh, I've heard nothing but good things about Yakuza Like a Dragon. Um, it's different because apparently it's turn-based, but the, apparently the turn-based combat in this game uh, works very well from everything I've heard. Yeah, a lot of people uh, love this this game. I've yeah. seen a lot of people stream it and stuff. Uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Look, I've sung the praises of this game enough. It is great. It is the last good thing Activision has ever done. Um, so if you haven't played it yet and you have a PlayStation Plus account, now's your time because it is phenomenal it's just as good as you remember it if not better now uh Uh, and little nightmares is great too this is a great this is a fantastic month yes it is very good uh and it doesn't stop there because also for playstation plus extra and premium these are the top two tiers so if you have playstation plus essential essential tune out um but if you have oh. either the extra tier or the premium tier, you get the entire Yakuza series. That's sick. <laughs> yes. So uh, you get Yakuza 0, uh, Yakuza Kiwami, and Yakuza Kiwami 2, which is a remake of the first two games. And coming later this year will be Yakuza 3, 4, and 5 remastered. Uh, okay, so I see the split here. Um, yes. So, 
extra PlayStation Plus extra is for my understanding was always that PlayStation Plus extra was for PlayStation 5 and 4 games. Yes. And then PlayStation Plus premium was for retro and PlayStation 3. Well, premium you get all the benefits of essential and extra. Right, 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 right. It's Plus addition to retro it. stuff. Yes. So the games that are from here are oh, coming later this year. Yeah. Three, four, five. So so what system are those for? Uh it just says PlayStation Plus. Oh. What previous system well, are they for? Yeah, these are remastered versions. I think they're on PS4. Uh five is for PS4. Okay. Four is for PS3, but it's remastered. So I don't know. So that's understand. probably let me just look it up real quick. Because I think and they then, remastered them for PS4. Okay, and 3 is also for PlayStation 3. Yeah. But these are remastered, so they were probably... Yeah. It's weird to have a remastered version be locked away. But I guess these would be playable without cloud streaming? Where normally a PlayStation well, 3 game would be a cloud streaming game? Yes. Because it's because uh, Yakuza 3, 4, and 5 remastered are PlayStation Premium only. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so you can download them to your system without cloud streaming. That's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting because it's a they're PlayStation Three games, and that's why they're mm-hmm. locked behind the premium, but yes. they're not played traditionally like the play. But they're actually PlayStation Four because they're the remastered versions. This is where this stupid system with, yes. with three tiers gets really stupid and confusing. Yeah. Um, also, I forgot uh, Yakuza Six: The Song of Life. Uh, it will come will be coming later this year to PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium because Yakuza Six is a PS4 game. Right, 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 right. That makes this this all makes sense. That's good. If you're a Yakuza fan, there you go. You can play every freaking Yakuza game ever, uh, ever. It, it, and if you're not a Yakuza fan, I mean, now's the time to start because they're all there. <laughs> Become a Yakuza fan. Yeah. Start with uh, Like a Dragon. I mean, everybody likes that game. Yeah. Especially if you if you're down with turn based stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right. We also have Xbox stuff. Xbox said. <laughs> yeah. A reminder, they did say they were getting rid of uh, 360 games in October. and But, you know, that doesn't mean they should stop caring about it because, well, okay. On the Xbox One, for all month, you get Calico. And from the 16th to September 15th, you get Scourgebringer. It's a of course. name of my heavy metal album coming soon, Scourgebringer. Mm-hmm. And then uh, for the 360, you get Saints Row 2 from now into the 15th. And then Monaco, What's Yours is Mine, from the 16th to the 31st. Saints Row 2 and Monaco were previously games with gold. That's... I hate so when, you probably already I hate have when they games. do that. <laughs> Calico is one of those like... The hum, like friggin' uh, 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 what do they call it? Like the the the, the feel good when they do like the humble direct, not the humble direct, the like yes, the feel good. Oh, d- 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 yeah, I know what you're talking direct. about. The hell do they call yeah. it? The cutesy direct. Yeah. Uh, Scourgebringer is one of those games that people keep telling me to play. Uh, it's a it's a fast action platformer. Uh, that sounds like it's right up your alley. Calico is this game where you ride cats and stuff. Yeah. It's one of those like cute games. Well, I mean, you know, Sony's already making headlines with Stray. You know, Microsoft probably needed a cat game of their own. Have you played Stray? No. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's an okay game. There's, yeah, I, I there's better it's... games is what I was what I'll say. <laughs> Are there better cat games? Uh, that's the, that's the Gato Roboto, maybe. <laughs> uh, Scourge- the Catwoman missions in Arkham City. There you go. Uh, Scourgebringer looks sick. Scourgebringer, I'll, I'll give him that. I'll give him Scourgebringer. Yeah. Uh, hey, maybe this would work with. No, you can't use this with the gamepad with with the with the eight bit do thing. But you could. Uh, there's that eight bit do uh, Pro two that works for the Xbox. So yeah, use that I guess. 
Anyway, uh, here you go. If you want a cutesy game, you got Calico. If you want something fast and hard, you got Scourgebringer. And then you got others. You got friggin' the uh, Xbox 360. Just throw away stuff. I mean, to be fair, Saints Row 2 is a very good game. But I, you gave it away already. <laughs> I Saints Row is just... You, you already have Grand Theft Auto. And then you have Saints Row, which just, to me, feels like a worse version of Grand Theft Auto with... with well, worse jokes and stuff well not no saints dude saints row 4 is actually very funny the thing is uh grand theft auto got like very serious as like mm. the games went on like it tried to become like a much more serious type of game in between all the dick and fart jokes uh-huh. saints row is all dick and fart jokes <laughs> yeah but like, like i don't it, like it, it knows it knows why you're playing a game like this. I need a and certain it doesn't type try to of tell dick and fart like jokes. A, a, it doesn't try to tell you like a serious human drama about, you know, the plight of the American working class and uh, the t- trials of like the immigrants, you know, coming in to make his way. It's just like, hey, you want to blow up a bunch of gangsters with rocket launches on a jetpack? Here you go. Yeah, it's, there's, a, there's a certain like... I, I can like I can feel it when a game is like uh, 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 this is our thing. You're gonna you're gonna uh, blow up hookers and it's gonna be funny because they're they're hookers. You know, like like yeah, it's this is gonna be fun because it's violent. You know, like I don't need that in my in, in my life. No, it's. I mean, it, yes, there's that, but like in Saints Row Four, there's a whole part where you get kidnapped by aliens and you think for a second you're in a '50s TV show. And okay. the I, I posted it on my Twitter. Just the way he walks in that is like the funniest thing I'd ever seen <laughs> in a game. To be fair, but, I liked Grand Theft Auto V. I liked it a lot. Yeah, no, Grand Theft Auto V is a very good game. But, you know, people play Grand Theft Auto to have a good time. And, you know, they try to shove like a, a social commentary in there. Like oh, serious social commentary. We'll be talking about that in a, yes, in a we will. In, in very shortly. Uh, anyway, uh we got uh, uh, the Game Pass stuff. Uh, yes. Better things on Game Pass. Yes. For the most part. Uh, starting with Ghost Recon Wildlands. This was not the better things I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Ghost Recon Wildlands I was really excited for, and I played it at E3 what, the year it was about to come out, and I said, this is just The Division, which was just yeah. uh, 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 d- 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 that other game. That Ubisoft uh, while uh, Watch Dogs, so I, yes. I was I was uh, pissed off because I'm, I was a huge Tom Clancy game guy, and and now every yeah. Tom Clancy game is just Ubisoft trash. Yeah, I, I've heard this be uh, been called the worst of the Ubisoft modern games, probably wow. because it is the prototypical Ubisoft modern game. <laughs> I didn't hear that it was. I mean, people who like Ubisoft games, I thought that they liked this game. I didn't know it what was, was uh, um there was. There's two like this. There's Wildlands, and what was the other Ghost Recon game that was exactly like this? <laughs> chat. No, no, seriously. Chat, help me out here. Wildlands was the first one. I thought. Okay, so then the second one with John Bernthal. What was that one called? John chat, Bernthal. Oh, The, the Punisher? Punisher. Yeah. Breakpoint. Was that Thank a DLC? Oh, okay. No, it was a whole other game. So that's the shitty one. That might be the shitty one, yeah. Honestly, that is probably just a copy and paste of Wildlands with John Bernthal yeah. in it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Two Point Campus. I don't know anything about this game. I hear about it every once this, in a while. Yeah, everybody's like so hyped about this game. I don't know why. Oh, I'd also like to point out, I forgot to read this. Sleeping Toads TV says Super Mario 3D World is a cat game. That might be the That's best true. cat game. <laughs> That's true. We got Turbo Golf Racing. Excuse me. Is that Rocket League but golf? That, that I, sounds I, like it. I kind of want to play that. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Uh, What else? You got Cooking Simulator. You know, if Cooking Mama is too casual for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we got Shenzhen IO. Not familiar with this one. 
open wor- open world programming puzzle game that challenges players to build circuits using a variety of components. Inspired that- by real world electronics engineering, the game takes players on a journey to near future sh- uh, Shenzhen, the electronics manufacturing capital of the world. I've been fucking around with a Raspberry Pi Pico, and that game sounds like garbage. Why don't you just <laughs> play with a freaking like actual thing? Why don't you actually just code? I mean, that's I guess that's where where simulator games come in. You know, like why don't you just yeah. actually cook instead of playing cooking? Simulator? Yeah. Why don't you actually play guitar instead of play Guitar Hero? Why don't you that's actually play tennis instead of playing you know whatever that tennis game is? Uh, so. Mario. <laughs> yes. Uh this this turbo golf racing game looks sick, but why would you play this when you could just actually go turbo golf racing? Just yeah. take your car, <laughs> get one of those big Zorb balls, you know? Exactly. Uh but no, that actually was pretty fun. Uh did you say the Rome one? An off world uh, trading company? No, I did not. All right, well, Rome some game and off world trading company. Off world trading company yeah. I've heard about. Oh, those are PC only though. So, uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, interesting picks from Xbox. Not uh, yes. not too, not too jazzed about it. Got to say, yeah. PlayStation kind of had a big, a big drop this month. I feel like that's been Microsoft's thing uh, with Game Pass for a while. They'll have like the one big title to like lure you, in, lure, lure you in. And then it'll be like a bunch of like smaller hidden gemmy type games. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, let's. Real quick, I want to bring up, uh, if you have Amazon Prime, first of all, you can subscribe here for free on twitch.tv slash wolfden. It basically gives us money and doesn't cost mm-hmm. you anything because it, you just get a free Prime subscription every single month. So you can help us keep the lights on if you have Amazon Prime. It doesn't even cost you a damn thing. You just click a button over here on twitch.tv slash wolfden. And you have to do it every month. You have to renew it every month. It doesn't automatically renew. But uh, also, you can get some free games every month from Amazon Prime. Uh, yes. StarCraft Remastered this month. That's kind of a big deal. Uh, Metroidvania enthusiasts should check out Recompile. Okay. Scourgebringer, which we literally there just said <laughs> is, is, a, is on PC. So I might get, yeah. that. I might get it on Steam then. <laughs> um... Beasts of Maravilla Island, okay. Family Mystery Poisonous Promises, Zach McCracken and the Alien Mindbenders. All right, all right. Oh, is that a is that a LucasArts game? It's a classic Zach point and click adventure from LucasArts. Yeah. There you go. Uh yep. It looks like uh oh, it's a it's a knockoff of Evil Dead. The the the, uh, the, is the it poster. Or the poster oh, is the a poster, knockoff yeah. of Evil Dead. The poster is Evil Dead, yeah. I think Sonic is in there too. What? No. Unless uh, GameSpot is lying. Yeah, I don't see any. Uh, I don't see any Sonic. Unless it's available for something else. But yeah, I'll I'm gonna check out Scourgebringer. I wonder. So this is for Amazon Prime. I wonder if you can bring those into Steam. I don't think so. I think it's part of, not like their Luna thing. Although I don't know because when I redeemed Mass Effect uh, for Prime, I had to do it through Origin. Oh, so maybe you can. Uh, Scourge Bringer new claim game. Select Twitch account. Uh, oh god, I gotta do it again now. All right, well I'll do this while we uh, why don't we read some notifications here that I completely neglected before? Yes, let's uh, do that. We got Frito Pie Snacks with the 10 months. Hope you are both well. I am well. I can't speak for Will, but I think he's well too. I'm fine. (laughs) Keith Copa, thanks for the 33 months. Was watching your girlfriend girlfriend review and finally understood the difference in pronunciation 
of Mario and Mario when you both said them back to back. You'll be glad to know the way you say it is 100% correct. Confirmed also air fryer. Always air fryer. <laughs> what? 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 Okay, you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue. I'm not gonna <laughs> ask any questions. I'm just glad you're on the right side of history. Renwick, <laughs> thank you for the four months. Jin Wong, thank you for the 17 months. And Thrillhouse, thank you for the 13 months. Thanks for the reminder. Have the Optimusless Prime. <laughs> <laughs> and Little Blood, thank you for the seven months. Hello. Uh, it says I collected Scourgebringer. Now, how do I play the fucking game? <laughs> Is there like a f- launch or a f- redeem code thing? It says or? plug in digital scourge bringer. And that's it. This is, that's all it, it just, here it is. And then I click on it and it's, it's that, and that's it. There's no like library or anything. Amazon game launcher. Ugh. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. I'm not I'm not doing this. I, the whole reason I got it was because I wanted it on Steam. And if I have to play it on the computer, I'm going to be mad. Uh, anyway, why don't we talk about what the main topic of this whole thing is? Yes, Analog Pockets 1.1 update uh, beta brings game libraries, better safe states, and third-party cores. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Uh, This is from an article on Gizmodo. We love the Analog Pocket, but the retro gaming handheld didn't launch with its entire feature set. Instead, uh, features like a Wikipedia-esque library mode, uh, more comprehensive save states, and an easy offloading of Game Boy camera pictures were pushed off for the eventual 1.1 release. Uh, Well, now that release is available in beta, and it comes with additional features, including the Open FPGA developer program, which should should allow devs to enable the pocket to mimic many more systems than it can now. Pause. Okay. So so I'm going to interject here. The analog pocket it launched with two FPGA chips. The FPGA chip was the big marketing thing about the analog pocket. Yeah. Oh my God, it's crazy. It's hardware emulation. Wow, it's not even real emulation. It's doing it through hardware. It's like a Game Boy did. Now, the emulation community has like done a full on 180 on the analog pocket. Everybody <laughs> fucking hates the analog pocket now all of a sudden. Have you seen this? Yes, yes, I have. Because like the Mister's out, and it's also FPGA, and it's great, and everybody likes it because it's like open, and you could do whatever you want with yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, and previously, the Analog Pocket launched with two FPGA chips. One of them had all the Game Boy stuff on it, and the other one yeah. was useless, locked away, couldn't do shit with it, not open at all. Now right. it's finally well, be- open. Yeah, because the so second one was intended for developers to like create content yeah. for and they locked it away because you know it wasn't ready yet now it's ready so so now uh people have less to complain about with analog except i think the big issue people had with analog was that the marketing was like this is an emulation Re- meanwhile it is emula- it's just a different type of emulation yeah um and they made it seem like it's a unique cool thing when really like other people are doing the same thing but also like that's just marketing man they want to sell a bunch of shit you know, yeah. they're just really, they're doing a good job. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> yeah. I anyway, mean, I, there, there's more to it. I guess we can get to that after we finish the, right. Finish the article at hand. Okay. Come on. Uh, okay. A scholarly level gaming database library is perhaps analog OS's most ambitious new feature. This is being positioned as a reference level database of video games that will take you through gaming history uh, by system, game, region, developer, publisher, and even revision. Analog's promise that it's going to, that is really going for breath here, and that library will eventually catalog more games than just what the pocket can play. Uh, we've been we've been building a scholarly level library slash database of original media for a long time now. Analog founder Christopher Tabor told uh, said over email, "Our library was created for Pocket and future Analog products. We will extend beyond the systems that can be played on the Pocket. We are going to catalog everything possible. Everything in quotes is a lot. You only need to visit itch.io or even uh, some of the less popular sections of Steam, of the Steam Store." 
to see that gaming is truly a wide medium. Uh, it will be some time before we, it'll be some time before we know just how big library becomes, since it's not going to launch in its final state. For now, library will work by showing you information about the authentic game cartridge you've inserted into uh, the pocket, including any, re- including everything, including any relevant user-generated assets you might have installed on your system. All right, so so, so there's a lot that yeah. that that the library wants to do, and it's a, it's very confusing. Yeah, everything you they are saying about the library feature, take put take it take your take your little mind memory and delete it, delete everything they said because yeah. all it fucking is is right now all it is is you put a cartridge in there and when the game boots up before it boots up it says a little bit of information about the cartridge and then that's it. That's all the library feature is. Yeah, so I have mine right here. I have in the back of it uh, the Game Boy Advance game, Kim Possible 2, Draken's Demise. And when you go to boot it up, it tells you just a little quick blurb about it. And that's it. What does it say? Uh, it says the system is Game Boy Advance. It was developed by Artificial Mind and Movement, published by Disney Interactive uh, Studios. And its uh, region is the USA. Yeah, so uh, the, the only usefulness i can imagine for something like that is uh if you're like at a flea market and you're looking at some games and you want to see if something's real or not yeah uh, which is pretty cool that's a cool thing which that is a good feature and i think you know in its current state yes it's limited but again if you're at a flea market or if you're going to be at the long island retro gaming expo next week which we true will be, uh you can you can check the different cartridges there to make sure they work <laughs> instead of just giving the guy a lot of money for your cart um i think i think this article is making it sound like library is going to be a bigger thing than it is yeah they're really going hard on it and they're they're adding a lot of like marketing gaff to make it sound like it's like crazy but really it's just so i think what library is going to be is going to be just a list of every commercially available game boy game boy color and game boy advance game released during the original era of those systems which is already stuff that's freely available on Wikipedia and whatnot. And then over time, they'll add other system, other legacy systems like the Genesis, uh, the Super Nintendo, uh, Game Gear, and stuff like that. Um, it's not going to do every Steam game. It's not going to do every itch.io game or anything like that. It'll give information on the games for the systems analog makes itself. Uh, so on screen right now, I have exactly what it says. Uh, uh, it's, I I just only have Tetris on my desk right now. Uh, revision one. Okay. Ooh. Uh, Game Boy, uh, Nintendo R and D one, Nintendo Europe, Japan, USA image doesn't say. Yeah. And that's it. Uh, can you turn this off though? Because like it's, it's, it adds a step when you hit play cartridge. It's like an extra uh, step now. I mean, you probably, you, you must be able to, you know, because I know you can boot directly to cartridge. Maybe that turns it off. Very weird. Yeah. Uh, okay. But yeah, that's, they, they, they're giving it like a lot of like, they have a lot of aspirations for this library feature. Also the library features is one is what, is that the same as collections or is that different? Like when I you, think when it's you, the same. When you collect, they want to collect all the games together. Because like that makes I it sound like you're going to make like a playlist of ROMs, but really you can't make, you can't do ROMs. So it kind of sounds useless to me. Yeah. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, that, that is the libraries feature. Yes. Uh, open FPGA and third party cores. Open FPGA is how version 1.1 is most radically expanding the analog po- what the analog pocket can do. It's a developer program that's already been given to several third-party developers in an early access format and will allow them to make their own cores for the analog pocket. A new core represents a new console for the pocket's X- FPGA tech to try to mimic. And that means in the future, we might see a lot more uh, systems on the device other than Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game Gear, Neo Geo, and Atari Lynx compatibility it has right now. To start uh, Open FPGA off, third-party developer Spaceman 3 have ported the PDP-1 to the pocket. 
Don't blame yourself if you don't know what that is. It is one of those giant person-sized computers from the late 50s. Uh, mm-hmm. What makes it notable is that it also happened to be where the MIT campus at the same time as Steve Russell, who alongside his friends in the Tech Model Railroad Club, used it to develop Space War! Exclamation point. So you got to like emphasize. Uh, a simple piece of software that is widely reg- uh, recognized as the first d- digital video game preceding Pong by 10 years. The uh, PDP-1 Space War core was made available to press uh, at, as part of our version 1.1 preview, but Spaceman 3 will be distributing it to the public on its own. Have you played this? So, uh, I've played Space War before. I haven't played it on analog. Where have you played it? I've uh, probably some like computer emulator a long time ago. It wasn't there. It wasn't the original Space War. Game is just absolute garbage. <laughs> Bad game. It's uh. Well, remember 1950s. <laughs> yeah. So like the cool thing back then was look, I can move the point on the screen. Yeah. I can control it. Like that was literally that's the game. So it's not very I mean, exciting. We, look, we talk about you know making games available uh for people to play you know regardless of how old it is we talk about that all the time we we talk about it with like big name games like golden eye or super mario brothers or whatever this is literally the first video game ever created and you can't play it anywhere <laughs> analog found a way to make it playable for them so you know kudos on that true i mean yeah it's a it, i think it's a fun little thing to do with their uh open fpga chip and uh and it's like a fun little nod to like video game history uh yeah. and also i'm assuming it's open so they're allowed to do that but uh yeah yeah it's just not a very exciting game <laughs> <laughs> um but anyway now we also get save states so we had i didn't even know we had save states already I didn't think we did. We did. Uh, I I learned about it because I was watching uh, the studio, which is MKBHD's like second channel, because they yeah. made a video on the pocket, and I was watching that. And the guy was talking about how his Pokemon Yellow uh, doesn't let him save the game because he, the battery saves dead. I don't think he knows that. Uh, but uh, if he said. Uh, the analog button and up. If you press those two at the same time, it would save. But there's only yes. one. There's only one save state across all games. Yes. So now there's 128. Yes. Uh, one of the best features software emulators usually have over hardware emulators is, uh, like analogs, is save states or the ability to quickly save where you are in a game separate from the game's internal save system and then load it wherever you want. It's a great feature for pick up and play sessions or to avoid getting sent back to the start of a particular tough level. The Analog Pocket introduced save states uh, in an official capacity for the first time on the Analog product at launch, uh, but, but only in a reduced beta form that could save just one state at a time per game with no graphical interface. In contrast, uh, version one the version 1.1 memories function promises 128 save slots uh, usable by Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and Game Gear. You will be able to access these memories in a list format uh, with their dates and times and with their dates and times of creation displayed prominently. And the feature promises to expand to include screenshots on each save state in the future. Uh, uh, so yeah, th- 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 that's a uh... I didn't know Game Gear. I didn't know Game Gear was included in that. Yeah, Game Gear. I mean, when this thing was announced, it promised like pretty much every retro handheld. Um, Game Gear is the only one that they support outside of the Nintendo ones right now. So I imagine it was a big thing for them to get Game Gear functionality in that uh, at launch. So uh, another notable thing about this, uh, which I haven't actually tried yet uh it also adds a so it's 128 usable memory slots Mm -hmm. across all of those games for the first fpga chip the open fpga chip will have 128 memory slots per core so that means okay (laughs) 
So that means if you put a core on the open FPGA chip, that's 128 memory slots. Then you put another core, it's another 128 memory slots. Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance, that's three cores. Yes. It might be two. Because Game Boy and Game Boy Color are like kind of share one. Yeah. But I'm not too sure. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, you get more than 128. So that that's it's yeah. it, if you're talking the hardware, if you're talking using hardware, physical cartridges, you get 128 across all of them, which is more than enough. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so. Uh, uh, also, too, like you could probably you know, especially in future updates, probably offload your saves onto a computer, so you still have them. R- well, you need. Wait, yeah, how would you do that? Well, also, to, like, you need a memory card in order to use the memories function. Oh. So. Oh, so, okay, so you're saying you could probably back it up. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. I want to fuck with that. Because, like, yeah. every emulator has different freeze states or, or, or uh, yeah. uh, quick loads or quick saves. And that's essentially what this is. And every emulator kind of reads those differently. So I'm interested in what way this saves those files. Uh, and yeah. this is different than an actual save from the game, which you currently can't use the pocket to dump, which is a little right. annoying. It'd be nice to have a feature like that. Um, anyway... I completely forgot they were supposed to make it easy to transfer Game Boy camera photos. Yes. Uh, analog Pocket uh, 1v1, uh, 1.1 also promises to up the device's Game Boy camera compatibility, although this will be in the final update rather than the beta. Uh, the pre-smartphone digital camera, which hit the market in 90, 1998, was never considered great even when it came out. The 128 by 128 pixel CMOS sensor just couldn't capture enough detail to make out most subjects, and the out-of-the-box limitations uh, to the black and white photos didn't help. But that hasn't stopped the retro gaming community from embracing the device. Uh, hackers have found ways to connect it to modern printers and wirelessly transfer images to smartphones. Now, the 1.1 update will let you slap your Game Boy camera photos onto a micro sd card and put that into another device to retrieve them and uh, we're excited to toy with this and share our uh 0.001434 megapixel masterpieces with you later this fall yeah so it's not so it's not a thing yet oh so yeah. so the beta doesn't have it okay so right this is, but it's, this is useless it, information it, it'll come in the final release uh as for when 1.1 is leaving beta uh, Analog Pocket founder Christopher Tabor, Tabor provided a software development schedule to Gizmodo that says we can expect the 1.1 uh, update to near complete around September. So, so, so this is one of the things that Analog got a lot of crap for is that they're taking so long to to fulfill the promises that they had about the the, the, the device. Uh, yeah, and I think it kind of makes sense because not a lot of people have it. Uh, yeah. So I mean, taking their time with it and making sure everything's nice and good is probably fine. But uh, it's things like this where they're like uh, announcing you're going to have Game Boy camera uh, uh, pictures, but not now. That's not in this 1.1 update. It's in the actual 1.1 update that you'll get later. Like that little, yeah. those little things are what get people upset. Yeah. I, I also too there was something. So you can you can upload your own cores onto the analog pocket. And there was talk about how like people don't want to do that because that essentially means you're working for analog for free. Putting oh, oh, your developing cores onto their, a core. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which I don't think is true <laughs> or even fair to say. You're not analog made this for, as a hobbyist device. Obviously, if you're going to be developing for it, it's a hobby of yours. You've probably developed for other uh, projects or products like this, like Mr. or something similar. And you do that knowing that you're not doing it because you work for the company. You're doing it because you love the, you love, you know, retro games and you have a passion for it and you want to share that with other people. Yeah. You know, I don't think analog is taking advantage of anyone here. I don't think they're, you know, 
leaning on the community to do their work for them. I just think they know their audience and they made a device for that audience. That's it. It's as simple as that. Um, Yeah, I don't understand why like it's okay that Mr. is open and like needs cores from developers. <laughs> But yeah. but like analog, when analog does it, it's a problem. I will say though, there was an issue where uh, it was found out that analog was like like really under underpaying one of. The, they were trying to get a developer to work on something, and mm -hmm. uh, they like they like really lowballed this developer, uh, and that got a lot of flack. I don't. I'm trying to find it now, but I I don't. Yeah. I'm trying to find the exact quote, like why like people are upset with analog over this. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh is this it? Oh yeah, this is uh, this is a long story. It's called Analog <laughs> Pocket, a hate story. Back in late 2019, <laughs> the FPGA-based hardware emulation company Analog, known for their near-flawless clones of various retro video games, announced an exciting new product. This time around, instead of plugging into your TV, you'll be playing, you know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, they wanted me to work on an open-source replacement of the Game Boy Advance's built-in ROM code, which is traditionally, though erroneously referred to as the BIOS. This small block of code has a few functions. Most visibly, it runs before the game starts and does things like validate that there's a game cartridge inserted and show the boot splash screen. Further, it also contains a handful of functionality that blah, 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 blah. Uh, sounds like I'll be a perfect fit, right? Well, I would have been had they given me reasonable terms. They didn't. When I was first put in touch with the team, with a team member who handles somewhat more of the business side instead of the face of FPGA-based emulation, Kevtris, who is one of the founders of the company, I was given a rough outline of what they would need to be done. Okay, I'm, I can't read this whole thing. <laughs> uh, affirming that the, a reply affirming that sounded reasonable with an estimation of 300 to 400 hours of work with a price tag of $10,000 was what I got back. Uh, that may sound like a lot of money to people who are paid minimum wage, but indeed it is. But for someone who lived at the time in Silicon Valley, that didn't even cover rent. So they lowballed him. Right. Uh, did he come back with another offer? Uh, the next conversation unfor unfortunately only brought me red flags. The first hint of impacting MGBA development had dropped. Suddenly they were talking about delaying an MGBA release for a nebulous amount of time, directly contrary to what had been discussed prior. I was given an expectation of maybe delaying a release and GB and Game Boy Advance related commits until the pocket shipped. I don't know. I, I got I to gotta read this whole thing. Yeah. Uh, but that's a, this is another reason why uh, people... Uh, this is another reason why people are like like starting to mob against analogs because they lowball yeah. the developer on creating a, a a BIOS for Game for Game Boy Advance, which is something that I guess they would need. Um, which I guess... I, well, that... I guess that would go against the whole open mentality because they're creating a, a specific BIOS for the analog pocket. Right. Well, it's oh, yeah. The analog pocket is an open device. It's open in a sense that if you have the know-how, any analog pocket can be developed for. You don't right. need a special development kit. You don't need any extra tools other than what they give you. You know, if you know what you're doing, you can develop for it. That's what they mean by open. It's not like, say, uh, a place. If you want to develop something for PlayStation, you need you need a licensing agreement. You need a development kit. You need uh, special software. 
to do it. You know, you need all of these things. Analog, all you need is the device itself. That's what they mean by it being open. You don't have to pay them for anything for it. Right. Well, well, well now it's open. Right. It, it, it previously was. No, which I guess is why everybody was mad. It was because you paid $200 for this device and the... Uh, you, you could do similar things on a bunch of other devices. Um, and it's more open on those. But now it's open. So, right. I mean, now there's less things to be mad about. I want to yeah. read this whole thing. You know, uh, this will be my little bedtime story so I can understand <laughs> uh, what's so upsetting about uh, the amount. I mean, yeah, it's a low ball offer, which which sucks. It yeah. sucks when anybody gets a low ball offer. But then you say, no, I want more money. <laughs> <laughs> and then see what and then if they say no fuck you then it's like oh well this guy's an asshole because he said fuck you yeah but uh you know uh whatever it, 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 it could be anything uh so that's uh, just a handful of reasons why people are mad about analog but yeah. we, so we just read through the whole uh thing about uh, uh the new update uh what we left out was that this update, uh, uh, we said that it brought the open FPGA. What we left out is yeah. that now you can straight up download the cores for Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and Game Boy Color. Yes. Uh, those cores were dropped on the same day as this update on the mm -hmm. subreddit for Analog Inc., as well as a GitHub page by a user yes. named Spiritualize1997. This user had just created their Reddit account that day. Uh, and the same thing with their GitHub. It was just created that day. Um, so it's pretty clear to me that it's fucking just analog. <laughs> I think it, that... It's, it's heavily hinted at that it's Kevtris because he's done this before. Oh, I think for the Super himself. NT, he, okay. dropped, he dropped something like a like a core for it, a jailbreak core for it. Yes. Yeah, so and he worked uh, on it. Yeah. This, it, this guy even says they have been heavily tested for months. The cores have been heavily tested for months. Yeah. So the update just dropped. So like who had access to that update? You know, it's, it's, it's probably that guy. Yeah. So, uh, uh, which is cool. I mean, it's fine. Whatever. We have the cores now on the open part and we can fuck around with them. Uh, yeah. and from what I've tested so far, it plays exactly the same. Everything plays exactly the same because it's the same freaking core. Uh, yeah. It's one step removed from hardware emulation because you're running a ROM, but who cares? You're still, it, it fixes one of the issue, the biggest issues that I have with the analog pocket, which was that I had to put a cartridge in and I had to keep all of these cartridges with me. Now, instead, yeah. I just have all of my games on the micro SD card and it runs, yes. it runs just fine. I'm going to do some more tests to see exactly how different the emulation is because there's certain games that might have certain problems. Um, but I'm excited to see it. So far, everything seems fine. Also, save states work, which is crazy. Yes. Um, now, this just came out. So we only have Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance, and a community, camber, a community member made Neo Geo, a Neo Geo core. That's cool. But that's all we have so far. I mean, it'll start with those, and then slowly but surely, we'll get Game Gear. We'll get Atari Lynx. Uh, we may even get Super Nintendo and Genesis, which would be cool. I'm excited for Super Nintendo and Genesis. I think it's possible we could even get up to PlayStation 1. That would be interesting. Because this thing is uh, very it's way more powerful than it has any right being. Yes. Uh, uh, I don't know exactly the technical yeah. specs, but I'm pretty sure it could... It, it has the power to to run that. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find... There's a website for it. There's a website... So, so, the, so the, uh, the, the Reddit... Reddit.com slash Analog Inc. will be updated with new cores as they come out. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's also a website that will be updated as well. Uh, that's not it. Well, 
whatever. Go to go to go to that Reddit and you'll you'll find uh you'll find it. Uh and then and then there's uh there's some website that will constantly update with all the cores that people have. Mm-hmm. Uh I thought I I freaking thought I Oh, you know what? I think it's on my MacBook. I'm going to talk about it in my video on Thursday. You can just go to my video. I'll link it in the description. Um, so that's cool. It's very exciting. Uh, I'm excited to see yeah. what else they make with it. It's, it's it's less about the update itself and more about what the community is going to do with this update. Yes. It's about the, all the... I mean, this thing always had potential, but now the potential has just exploded as yeah. to what this could be. So. And, and, and and yeah, it's yeah. it's it's... it's they're relying on community members to uh, make people interested in, in their product, but like mm-hmm. it's not much different than uh, you know buying a Raspberry Pi and expecting the community to give you the software for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, like I mean, again, this thing was this is this is not like this is an enthusiast product. This is a thing mm-hmm. for like the hardcore, and that's generally an audience who would do something like you know create the uh, custom software for it uh who would try to mod it who would try to develop beyond what analog made it out to be so they know like i said they know their audience they are making a product for that audience and they want to see what the audience can do with it uh so we want to say a special thank you to garrison for the four months it sounds more like a core of gba than a bios uh oh for what what uh the guy was yeah. developing for for 10 grand um so so that's the thing so when you put the bot when you put the core on the open fpga chip it also requires a bios file a yeah. dot bios so that i'm pretty sure that's what he's talking about is that because uh the 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 thing that Kevtris or whoever uploaded when he uploaded the cores to GitHub and, and that Reddit yeah. when made that Reddit post when he did that he didn't include the BIOS files you need a Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color BIOS file and you need to go Google around for that you can't because that's thing that would be illegal to just give out yeah so somebody was being commissioned to create an open source version of that BIOS file so so that they won't get sued by Nintendo, but, uh, you know, I don't know whatever came of that because I mean, the analog pocket has to have a Game Boy Advance BIOS on it. It has to yeah, on the original FPGA yeah. chip. Uh, mm-hmm. but they couldn't, for whatever reason, they didn't give that out for the second FP uh, open FPGA chip. Yeah. The lore in villager. Thank you for the 18 months, 18 awesome months. Thanks to the great content. Willie and Bobby. Thank you very much. No problem. No problem. Anytime, dude. Uh, how are you guys doing, Chad? Are you still with us? Is everybody there? Are you all there? Say hello. Hey, everyone seems to be doing pretty well. I, I did, I did some here. activity in the chat because uh, I'm seeing. I feel like some I broke hellos it. from first time chat. <laughs> uh, we have to talk about the new update to the PlayStation Five. This is also in beta, though. I think. Yes. Uh. They're doing a lot to update the PlayStation 5. Uh, one thing that Bob has been asking for for a long time, uh, support for 1440p. Let's go! Sony is finally adding support for 1440p displays to the PlayStation 5 to the cheers of many players, including Bob, uh, particularly those on PC yeah. with high refresh rate QHD monitors. This has been a long requested feature by PS5 owners and a feature that the Xbox Series X and S has supported since launch. The feature is currently only available for users who were signed up to the beta firmware channel, but it should be releasing to all users very soon. Uh, Games that natively support 1440p will be rendered at that resolution, while 4K games will be downsampled for better anti-aliasing. Digital Foundry also notes that the firmware supports 120 hertz at 1440p with either HDR or SDR, but not variable refresh rate. Uh, Another much requested feature is the addition of so-called game lists, which is basically just folders. Uh, Players can have up to 15 games lists and up to 100 games per list. Uh, The update also brings a whole host of user experience improvements, including the ability to compare differences between stereo and 3D audio, the ability to request uh, to view a friend's screen, 
and get notifications when you can join a game played by one of your party members. Uh, you can see the full list of improvements at the link here. So uh, the biggest deal is 1440p. The reason this yes. is a big deal is because these new consoles now have frame rates of up to 120 uh, frames per second. Mm -hmm. And I think they could even do, I think they can technically do more than that if you scale it down a little bit. Yeah. But uh, 120 frames per second is the biggest deal. Uh, most people who have high refresh rate monitors who can s handle that shit don't have 4K monitors. They yeah. game on a PC and at most have a 1440p monitor. Most people. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have even 1080p. But 1440p seems to be a good middle ground between 1080 and 4K so that you can squeeze yeah. some frames out of your out of your PC or, or console or, or what have you. So it's a good little technical middle ground. Uh, Xbox has had it for a long time because it's mm -hmm. like, why not? They allow 4K yeah. and 1080. Why not just... It doesn't make any sense to me why they would just cut out the middle. Maybe because they right. just want to refine it and make sure that it's perfect before they release into the world, but it really shouldn't be that fucking hard to do. Yeah. Um, finally, we got it. And uh, yeah. my concern was that it was they were going to release it and not have a high refresh rate available. Digital <laughs> Foundry tweeted and said that it does do 120 hertz in both SDR and HDR, which is phenomenal. Yes. Uh, and it does, you can do it through HDMI 2.0, which is also awesome. Yes. Which is uh, why I guess these monitors, ex well, I guess the monitors people usually do a uh, display port, but anyway, no, no variable refresh rate, which is something. Yes. That's, uh, but that might not be a concern for you. You might not necessarily need it. Uh, for the games you're playing. So, yeah. So variable refresh rate is the thing that locks the the monitor to the device to, 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 yeah. uh, to be in sync with each other. So if the frame rate dips to like, from like 120 to like 90, it'll, it, it'll stay this, it, it'll lock together. They'll both dip so that you won't get any screen tearing, uh, yeah. which fixes a lot of stuff. Um, but if a game does a steady 120, you'll be fine. And at 1440p, most of these games should be fine. Uh, I'm, I bet you Fortnite's going to be just fine. Warzone will probably be all right. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you'll be fine. Uh, but uh, it is a little weird to not allow variable refresh rate. That sounds like a yeah cool thing to, to, to have, to get rid of that screen tearing. Um, yeah. There's always got to be like a little caveat. Maybe when it's out of beta, they'll have variable refresh rate. But yeah, uh, that's the thing. Like they're they're doing all these updates to it. They'll probably they could add variable refresh rate in the future. Um, they're probably on, didn't include it now because they just want to make sure 1440p works and it right. works well. So it's, I mean, is that they have variable refresh rate at 4K, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so yeah. they can add it to. 1440p. Um, this is a this is great. This is one of the things I've been bitching yeah. about since the stupid console came out because it just didn't make any sense. And and I love yeah. gaming at a, a desktop setup with with a monitor. I love doing that, and and that's one of the most accessible ways to get a high refresh rate. And I think high refresh rates are freaking awesome with these new consoles. Yeah. It's like the whole reason to get a new console. Um, yes. So this is a more accessible way to do that. But with all the things they've added, they are taking one thing away. Uh, Sony is, uh, where is it? Sony is ditching uh, and discontinuing the accolades feature that was introduced on the PlayStation 5. How dare For you. those unaware, which is probably all of you, uh, accolades could be uh, awarded to fellow players in online games to commend their gameplay. Teammates and opponents alike could be uh, welcoming, helpful, and more. But according to an addition... In addition, on the PlayStation website, the feature is being removed. In the fall of 2022, the Accolades feature on PlayStation 5 will no longer be supported, reads the website. Uh, the feature hasn't seen the level of usage we anticipated, so we are refocusing our efforts. We encourage the community to continue to send positive messages to each other. Sony included a number of user, uh, user interface features to the PS5, not just Accolades, but cards, 
uh, to, to show suggested activities, in-game guides, and the ability to jump to specific parts of the game. But some have found these features to be unnecessarily and barely used. It seems that uh, certainly is the case with Accolades, a feature surely aimed at reducing toxicity in online games. Uh, yeah, I had no idea this was even a thing. That was it. Yeah. Uh, I knew the cards thing and, like, the, the in-game help was a thing, but I don't even remember them talking about accolades when the before the system launched. Um, I, I erroneously conflated this with, uh, the trophies. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sure you're not the only one who made this mistake. <laughs> no, yeah. this is just something, this is like, you could send, like, a, hey, good job, or nice try, little message to people like when you play online. Oh, they completely to, didn't realize yeah. that everybody's toxic and would never want to do that. Yeah, as opposed to the usual fuck you dickhead type stuff. I report people on Valorant so much. It's like my favorite thing to do. Oh yeah. Cuz everybody's a piece of shit. Everyone's an asshole. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just reporting people left and right. <laughs> <laughs> um on the other hand though, it, it is interesting that they're discontinuing it. Uh a lot of times, you know, console makers will introduce a feature and they'll just leave it there and let it just die on its own yeah. uh sony is actively like no we'll shut it down we'll remove it and we'll replace it with something that, else that That's... means it must have been really bad <laughs> it must have been, like nobody used this thing yeah <laughs> uh so... but it's i mean it's good cut the fluff out yeah you don't want to give these people too many features and there are there are other features like the card staying and like the in-game help and like the jump to that apparently are also underutilized. So I'm wondering if people if uh, Sony will get rid of those as well, because those are also like very superfluous features that I don't think anybody uses in the slightest. Uh, let's talk about real quick Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's new maps. Wow! Yes, a new batch of courses is coming to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Pack. Just uh, read the coming maps. August Just read fourth. Oh yeah, August fourth uh, is important. August fourth yeah. is important. Uh, okay, so we're getting in the Turnip Cup. You get a uh, tour New York Minute from Mario Kart Tour, uh, the SNES Mario Circuit Three from Super Mario Kart, uh, the N sixty four, the N sixty four course uh, Calamari Desert, and the DS course uh, Waluigi Pinball. Uh, that, those are for all for the Turnip Cup, and for the Propeller Cup. You get uh, Sydney Spirit from Mario Kart Tour, Snowland from Mario Kart Super Circuit on the GBA, uh, Mush Mushroom Gorge on Mario Kart Wii, <laughs> and Sky High Sunday, which I believe is an original level. It is. Uh, somebody was, I want to say Jackson, somebody was saying this was like a, like a never before released level, but the way he worded it made it sound like it was in development for something else. Like it was like a hidden uh, thing, but I think it's just a new map. So it's a, new, it is a new map, but uh, according to this article, it will also be added to the Mario Kart tour arcade game at a later date. Arcade game. Yeah. That's the, that Namco arcade game, Mario Kart tour. The one that Pac-Man's in. They're going to update that? Yes. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, I think it's... Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mario Kart Tour is the mobile game. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mario, Mario Kart Arcade is, I think, Mario Kart Arcade. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, some of these levels are from Mario Kart Tour, which is stupid. Yeah. Like, nobody freaking wants those. But we're getting four... Uh, no, I'm sorry. Eight new maps, which is kind of a big deal. And this yeah. is wave two of five. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we're getting a lot more of this Mario Kart DLC. And this comes out freaking Thursday. So Yeah, that's exciting. It's exciting if you like Mario Kart. Yes. Uh, do we like Mario Kart here at the Wolf Den? I, I don't know. I do not like Mario Kart. I will give it props for being the go-to party game for normies, but uh, I hate this game. <laughs> it is it is definitely a game I get worse at every time I play it. Yes. Um, and yeah, it's like it's fun, but within limits. <laughs> I don't like. I don't like. I don't think it's fun. I, I, I need, feel like. 
I, I need like a boot camp. I need somebody who's like really good at it to, to show me how to play the stupid I game. I feel like I would like this game more if we played with my friends Battle, like we used to do on the yeah. 64 Mario Kart, because Battle is fun. You know, yeah, that's just like, you trying to wreck each other. Yeah, there's like, there's no, you know what? Because there's no rubber banding. <laughs> that's true. That is true. <laughs> and I don't mean I want to be taught by somebody who's just, who thinks they're good at the game. I want to be taught by like a speed runner, you know, like somebody who's yeah. actually fucking good at the game. Because everybody in the on the planet thinks they're good at Mario Kart. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's cool for people like Mario Kart. This is cool. It's a good way to get people yeah. involved. Uh, back into Mario Kart. Also, uh, it is part of Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pass. So if you have that, yes. you get the you get all the whole update yes. every time there's a new update. Yes, there's, and you know, adding more car- tracks to Mario Kart is not a bad thing. It's probably something they should have done a long time ago. <laughs> yes, yeah, this is an old ass game. Yeah. Old ass game and still and the best selling game on the Switch. Yes. <laughs> and then like eight. one of the best selling games every single month. Top of the charts all every time. Yeah. When did that game originally come out? Twenty fourteen it came out on the Wii U. Eight years ago. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's talk about the big, terrible, horrible news about Grand Theft Auto. Yes, they're putting women in the game. <laughs> How could they Grand do Theft this Auto's, to us, cis Grand white Theft men? Grand Theft Auto 6 will feature the series' first female protagonist and center around a pair of characters styled after the American criminal duo Bonnie and Clyde, a source has said. The first character details for GTA 6 were revealed in a recent Bloomberg article based on interviews with the source close to the matter. Uh, It's the first specifics we've heard uh, we've had since Rockstar confirmed a sequel is well underway earlier this year. The report source claims that GTA 6 will feature a Latino woman as one of its protagonists who the second leading character is and what the nature of their relationship is isn't clear. Uh, Bonnie and Clyde were a romantic uh, couple (laughs) who set out on a series of bank robberies during the America's Great Depression. Their life as a small-town criminals who went on to perform larger heists only to be gunned down by the police after a public manhunt has been romanticized in several books and films after their, de- af- after their death. Uh, I just want to point out that the film starring Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway is spectacular. It is actually a legitimately great film. Oh. One of the best films ever made. So go watch it if you can. Uh, the notorious criminal tale isn't worlds away from the stories in previous GTA games. Rockstar's beloved uh, crime em ups often center around characters who are down on their luck and turn to crime. Uh, while writing about the uh, while writing about another outlet's anonymously sourced stories isn't usually uh, tech radar's practice. Bloomberg's Jason Schreier has a long history of accurate reporting when it comes to this type of story. Uh, so I, I'm I didn't know that it was a duo. That it was going to be uh, two people. Uh, my, my brain, yeah. I just automatically assumed it was going to be three, just like GTA Five, and one of them was just going to be a woman. It kind of makes a lot more sense if it's um, like a like a man and a woman, and that gives. Yeah. I mean, well, that's not confirmed. It could be a woman and a woman, but right. But that gives less of a reason to be outraged. <laughs> like it just makes it. I, it like why wouldn't it make sense if it's like a Bonnie and Clyde duo? Yeah, it's, you know, I, you know, just people people don't want women in their things <laughs> for some reason. You know, stupid people. Uh, apparently, th- it's not in this article, but this is scaled down from the original idea. The original idea was to have the game take place in three different towns with up to six different protagonists that you hop around. Oh, God, and they scaled that down significantly to one location based on Miami. And the two protagonists. Uh, so if it's based on Miami, that means it could be Vice City. Huh? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> now, Vice go. City, the game took place in the 80s, right? Yes. In a fictionalized version of Miami. That'd be yeah, that'd be cool if it's yeah. like a modern Miami. That'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, 
Bloomberg source also says that GTA 6's characters have been created with more political sensitivity in mind than previous entries in the series. While Rockstar often sells its games as satirical takes on American culture, uh, deriding people from across the political spectrum and those of all demographics, the developer has taken steps to uh, more carefully direct its jokes this time around. Developers on the game are reportedly being cautious not to punch down and avoid making marginalized groups the punchlines of their jokes. That sentiment extended to the release of GTA 5 on PS5 and Series X and S earlier this year uh, when several transphobic jokes were removed from the game. A Kotaku report uh, from several years ago criticized Rockstar's workplace culture for its long periods of mandated crunch, bullying, and frat boy antics. Speaking to Bloomberg now, however, some employees suggested the developer has taken steps to overturn that image in an effort to become a kinder employer. With the introduction of a female Latina protagonist to GTA 6, it looks like some of those progressive changes have extended past Rockstar's workplace and into its next release. So that's the thing that... Uh, what what I I've, I've only been hearing about this outrage secondhand. I haven't actually seen any of this outrage myself. But yeah. when I first heard about it, it was because Grand Theft Auto was going woke, and I thought that extended far beyond just having a female protagonist. I thought that was like Grand Theft Auto, like like Rockstar was saying that they like uh, their 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 previous games had some like unsavory like jokes and commentary mm-hmm. that they want to like uh, you know I don't know like be more careful about. Maybe they didn't directly say that, but I mean I don't know where I got that information from. But anyway, <laughs> it's fucking 2022. Back then, people used to make stupid jokes. And now things yeah. are. Grand Theft Auto has always been a social commentary. It's always done shit like that. And now, yeah. the social commentary is going to be 2022 social commentary. So things might be a little different. I'm sure they're still going to yeah. joke about you know the establishment and like you know. It's yeah, it, it's still going to have jokes. It's still going to make fun of people. It's just not going to do it in the same uh, harsh and oftentimes outright mean way it used to do it. Yeah, that's all. You know, it's still going to be a Grand Theft Auto game. It's not going to all of a sudden be, you know, Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean, like, there's ways to do social commentary with uh, 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 some some things that might not necessarily be considered woke, like South yeah. Park. South Park does it all the time. And they're always constantly changing the way that they do it and stuff. And yeah. they might do some things that sound like they're, like, outrageous and crazy. But then at the core of it, you realize, oh, wait, it's not really that, you know, it's not really that crazy. Yeah. Uh, and that's probably what they're going to try to do. They're probably going to do some social commentary in a way like that. And I, th- and that's, I mean, it's fucking there. There, I don't think anything's really changing. They're just kind of changing with the time. It's really, yeah. It. And that's it. Uh, f- and you know, uh, someone pointed this out in the chat. This is technically not the first time Grand Theft Auto was, will have a female protagonist. Uh, you can play as a woman in the original Grand Theft Auto on the PlayStation one of, because you had a character select screen, but you know, in that game, you know, your character was like a pixel that big (laughs) and like, you couldn't really see them from the top down perspective. So like the gender was meaningless. Uh, And of course in Grand Theft Auto online, you can create women uh, and play as them. This is the first time since then. And this is the first time since Grand Theft Auto became Grand Theft Auto, the biggest video game in the world that you can play as a woman. And, you know, so I think, you know, Grand Theft Auto 1 is one thing. Post Grand Theft Auto 3, Grand Theft Auto is another. And, you know, they're, you know, yeah, it's not the first time you can, but it's the first time that it matters. Yeah, I don't, uh, I, I don't, I don't understand. I, I, I want to read some of the outrage because, <laughs> like, I really have, <laughs> I've only heard it secondhand. So I don't really know exactly what they're even bitching about. It's, it's like you know when uh you know when they made a woman a Jedi, you know Catwoman put white and privilege together in a sentence. Oh my god! Oh. I, I like there's there's been a million different races in Grand Theft Auto as the protagonists. Yeah. Why is it a problem that there's a there's a woman in the in the in the front? Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, next up, Deus Ex. You care about Deus Ex. Uh, well, I think we can all care about this article because it's former Deus Ex boss unloads on Square Enix. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I'm, inter- I'm here for it. All right. 
Back in May, Japanese publisher Square Enix announced it was selling a number of its Western studios that it's owned since 2009, including Eidos Montreal, who made Deus Ex, and Crystal Dynamics, who made Tomb Raider. For uh, Stefan Diastos, uh, I think I got that right, uh, who founded Eidos Montreal and left the company in 2013, the deal marks the end of a decades-long train wreck in slow motion. In an interview with GameIndustry.biz, uh, uh, Diastos lets loose on his former bosses, blaming Square Enix's management in both Japan and London for many of their Western Studios' troubles. He particularly references Square Enix's relentless drive for astronomical sales, which became so famous among the industry and even fans that it became something of a running joke. In this, uh, in this following instance, one year Japan had been expecting a $65 million profit when without big games to release during that time frame, they were actually started at a $65 million loss. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, quote, uh, Diastos, uh, the pressure was starting to build and my employees uh, towards me, me towards my superiors. I think when people are in a crisis situation where there's a lot of, uh, uh, sorry. I think when people are in a crisis situation where there are, where there's a lot of situations, uh, you do see their core behaviors or values. And I didn't like what I saw. There was a real, there really was a lack of leadership, courage, and communication. And when you don't have those basic things, no employee can do their job correctly, especially when you're heading a studio. I was losing hope that Square Enix Japan would bring great things to IDOS. I was losing confidence in my headquarters in London. In their annual fiscal reports, Japan always added one or two phrases saying, we were disappointed with certain games, they didn't reach expectations, and they did that strictly for certain games that were done outside of Japan. Uh, the article says, this does not sound like a healthy relationship. Uh, interestingly, uh, DeSatos uh, adds that he believes Square Enix's bargain basement sale of its Western studios wasn't just down to their performance, but because the publisher is hoping to be bought by Sony. Uh, quote, if I read between the lines, Square Enix Japan has not uh, Square Enix Japan was not as committed as we hoped initially. And there were rumors, obviously, that this that with all of these act, uh, activities of mergers and acquisitions, that Sony would really like to have Square Enix within their wheelhouse. I heard rumors that Sony said they're really interested in Square Enix Tokyo, but not the rest. So I think Square Enix CEO uh, Yusuke Matsuda-san uh, put, it, uh, put it like a garage sale. Uh, Diastos goes on to say that the relationship between Japan and its Western studios was a train wreck in slow motion, while also talking about how the success rate of superhero games is not good in light of the performance of Marvel's Avengers or Guardians of the Galaxy. So you should definitely check out the full-length uh, interview at GameIndustry.biz for more of his tea. I'd imagine... So was Marvel's Avengers, was that failure the fault of the publisher? I'd imagine the publisher didn't help matters <laughs> I thought the that situation. I thought that they're the reason it became like an always online weird bastardization of what it was supposed to be. I think that's part of it. Uh, I do know that like Square Enix spent a lot of money, not just on that game, but on that license overall. Yeah. And they had like, like the article says, astronomical expectations for that game. And I remember reading somewhere that like, at the rate that game was going, especially after launch, it will never recoup its money back. Right. Because it just wasn't popular. Um, a lot of people, not a lot of people play it, even to this day, with all of, like the updates and stuff to try to make the game better. Uh, it's just, it's been a money loser for Square Enix ever since. It's not a surprise that uh, the word on the street or the word on the inside is that Square Enix is trying to get sold to Sony. That that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Uh, I've also heard things about how, like, uh, I mean, we've heard previously that Square like didn't care about their Western studios because, yeah. uh, I mean, that's why they sold them all off. Like, like, and, and that's this is like a tale as old as time, where like the, the 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 Japanese like like home office just doesn't give a shit about the American yeah. offices and like doesn't you know like treats them like like second class. Um, and that seems to be the case at Square Enix. It seems like that was, was this person's experience. Yeah. 
Uh, and, and it's weird because I like they bought Eidos uh, specifically to get a foothold in the Western market at a time when every Japanese publisher was trying to do that. And it seemed like a good idea because Eidos had, you know, Tomb Raider. It had Deus Ex. It had uh, Thief. It had all these other great games. Hitman. It had Hitman. Um, but they would put these like twists and limitations on them that like kind of, you know, hobbled their chances at success. Famously, they wanted Tomb Raider to sell, you know, X amount of copies. It sold W amount of copies, which was very successful, but it wasn't what, you know, Square Enix wanted. So they labeled it a failure. Um, they wanted Hitman, the most, uh, the start of the most recent Hitman trilogy. They wanted that to be episodic because that's what mobile games were doing at the time. Um, when that game didn't succeed, what they wanted, they sold off IO Interactive and then IO Interactive went on to release Hitman 2 and 3 and just made the series better with each successive game um, to the point where, like, that's one of the best-reviewed series of the generation. They canceled Deus Ex 3 because Deus Ex 2 wasn't as successful as they wanted because they put in microtransactions and shit because that's what mobile games were doing mm-hmm. um, and forced and you know forced that studio to make uh, Guardians of the Galaxy instead. So uh, it's good that they sold off. Uh, all their yes. Western studios because uh, they weren't uh, happy with them anyway. Yeah, it, it's so it's good that like those studios are like going to a place where like maybe they can be you know better respected. Maybe like we can get better games out of it than what we had gotten. Um, but it just it just it's sad that it had to come to this because Square Enix is a big enough studio where they could have like helped these studio these other studios succeed. Right. But they clearly weren't that interested in it. They just put weird expectations on them. Uh, anyway, there's new Backbone. Backbone 1, which is a bad name for a PlayStation <laughs> device. Yes. Uh, the Backbone 1 PlayStation Edition is an officially licensed controller for PlayStation 4 Mobile. Uh, this is from uh, Manit's uh, Kyra, the CEO of Backbone, I am thrilled to announce uh, the Backbone 1 PlayStation Edition, an officially licensed mobile controller for iPhone users. The look and feel of the Backbone 1 PlayStation Edition was, was brought to life by our team in collaboration with the brilliant minds of PlayStation. The elegant colors, material, and finishes are all inspired by the design of the PS5's DualSense controller, all the way down to the transparent face buttons and its uh, visual distinctive floating appearance. It feels right at home with the other products in the PS5 lineup, like the Pulse 3D headset, which you can connect directly to the Backbone 1 PlayStation Edition. The Backbone 1 is a gaming essential for PlayStation on iPhone. If you have access to broadband internet and a PS4 or PS5, plug it, plug an iPhone into the Backbone 1 and instantly start playing your PS5 and PS4 games with the power of the PlayStation Remote Play app, uh, whether, it's about, whether it's out and about or even elsewhere in your own home. See PlayStation Remote Play website for details. Uh, Backbone One also works wonderfully with App Store games and other game streaming services that support controllers, inclu- including Genshin Impact, uh, Fantasian, Call of Duty Mobile, and more. Players can download the Backbone app for a customized PlayStation experience. Inside the app, you'll see various PlayStation integrations, such as custom glyphs representing iconic PlayStation shapes and the ability to browse hundreds of game titles. Uh, this trailer is a very weird concept, (laughs) um, but also they, 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 they did some weird, like after effects shit Yeah, with like the, like these guys aren't holding a backbone (laughs) or or something's weird about it. Like it's like a prototype version or something that just doesn't make it's something's something's off about it. Yeah. But anyway, uh. And I'm getting dizzy watching this stupid thing. Uh, but uh, cool. There's, there's uh, it's interesting that uh, there's a uh, uh, an official PlayStation version. There was a uh, so there's an Xbox version of the Kishi, the yes. Razer thing, uh, which is cool. Uh, Backbone. Let me see the old versions. Backbone. Yeah, they've made like uh, controllers for iPhone and Android before. Uh, yeah, this is, a specific, this is a specifically licensed PlayStation version for playing PlayStation Cloud games. Yeah, people wanted me to try this. Uh, this yeah. seems yeah, and and I'm I am a little excited about the PlayStation One. I think it looks pretty cool. 
Uh, yeah. I'm disappointed I didn't get one. I thought uh, I thought I you know I thought Sony, what's up? I thought I was gonna get one, but <laughs> haven't seen one in the PO box apparently. Um, uh, but, yeah, uh, so it looks cool, uh, and I yeah, haven't no. really, I haven't messed with Sony's remote play. Yeah, well, I mean, now you have a dedicated controller uh, for it, um, rather than trying to finagle. Because that's the thing with like mobile gaming and controllers still to this day. Yes, you can connect a, a DualShock or DualSense or an Xbox controller to your iPhone uh, through Bluetooth, but it's not unif- like there's no real uniformity throughout iOS games. Um, like app, like Apple has the feature there, but they never like it, they don't like support it as well as like they probably should if they want to do yeah. like serious gaming on the iPhone. You know, it'd be because like, if there were game like game, not every game supports it. Yeah. It'd be great if there were like overlays, like if you could do button overlays. Like so, some some devices will allow you to uh, 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 make it so that if you press a button, it'll press a point on the screen. That way you yeah. can that way you can adapt a controller to a game that only has touch controls. Right. Um, but yeah, also like people are developing games for the phone, knowing that most people don't have controllers. But it would be great to have that functionality. So, uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I love the concept of these types of things. Um, yeah. So, I'm, I want to give this a try. It looks pretty cool. Uh, we got to plow through the other stuff. Oh, there's uh, listen, there's more controller shit going on here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We got a lot. This happened like two seconds before we went live. Logitech announces a dedicated cloud gaming handheld that supports Xbox cloud gaming and more. I suspect uh, PlayStation. Uh, Logitech uh, is working with Tencent Games to launch a dedicated cloud gaming handheld later this year. The new hardware will be designed for cloud gaming services, offering a dedicated device with controls instead of the typical cases you attach to phones. The cloud gaming handheld will support Xbox cloud gaming and an NVIDIA GeForce Now service, and Logitech and Tencent are both working with Microsoft and NVIDIA on the hardware. Oh, I didn't know Microsoft was involved. Um, Logitech and Tencent are simply t- teasing the device today. And there's no mention of a release date pricing or even what the cloud gaming handheld looks like. Logitech obviously uh, be will obviously be leaning on its experience with PC and console gaming accessories, while Tencent looking to be more of an operations partner. Uh, that's all. That's really everything. Yeah. Um, Logitech makes great shit. I like, uh, I basically will use their mice. Uh, they make good headphones. Yeah, they make incredible stuff. Um, they, they own several, uh, well-known companies like, uh, blue microphones, Astro gaming, Jaybird, ultimate ear. Uh, th- those are really good speakers. Uh, yeah. Uh, the involvement of Tencent makes me believe that this is specifically for Chinese markets. So it not absolutely that it's is. not going to come, not that it's not going to come to you know international markets, but this is a you know because Tencent is the largest is the largest game company in the world, it's the largest company in China. Um, it looks like they're developing this for the Chinese market specifically, and then yeah. bring it out to the rest of the world. Yeah, I think that uh, game streaming is probably more popular over there. Uh, there are mm-hmm. devices that already do this. Like uh, the the I uh, no the Ein Odin was marketed mm-hmm. as a game streaming device, and I've used it for playing Game Pass, and it's freaking awesome. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know I've used a phone before for a similar thing, uh, and it would be nice to have a dedicated device. I'm curious uh, if there's going to be any sort of like better wireless technology involved, um, but I think it'll be a cool thing. I, I, hopefully yeah, it's not I think, too much money though, because it's not doing much processing yeah. on their end. I think because it's Logitech, I think that's a much more well-known brand, a much more trusted brand with the general consumer going public than something like uh, Ein or Aya. Um, so, like this, this has a chance of being sold in like a Best Buy or a Target or a Walmart. Um, you know the the fact that. You know, they could, they probably could make it cheaper and easier to get than a Steam Deck, which right now you can only really get through Valve. Right. Um, there, there's a lot of potential here, a lot of positive potential here. Um, and the question is, you know, how will the actual... Because this is just an announcement. They haven't shown off any devices yet. The question will be, how will 
you know, the final products pan out. Right. Uh, next, we're talking about Star Wars National Republic re- remake reportedly pauses indefinitely. We got to blast through these last four stories. Yeah. Um, well, long story short, Aspire, who were developing the Knights of the Old Republic remake uh, for the PlayStation 5, has put that remake on hold. Uh, internal demo of the KOTOR uh, remake didn't land as well as it could have when it was shown to Lucasfilm and Sony. This has led Aspire to tell employees that the project would be put on pause and that the company would look for a new contracts and development opportunities. Additionally, Aspire fired the remake's director, Brad Price, and design director, Jason Miner. The latter reportedly said on social media channels that the dismissal was unexpected. So, yeah. So it sounds like Aspire, who up until this point has you know, been, for lack of a better word, a port house. Mm-hmm. They've been in charge of like porting uh, games to predominantly Mac, but in recent years, um, classic games to uh, Switch and PS4, specifically the Star Wars games. This is, seems like their first AAA game that they're developing on their own, even though it's a remake. It was going to be like a brand new version of it. So it sounds like they bit off a lot more than they can chew uh, with this game. I was actually shocked when it was announced that they were doing it. When I saw Nice Little Republic remake, I was like, wow, that's crazy. And then I I saw Aspire and I was like, what the fuck? They have no, there's no reason to allow them to do that. (laughs) Um, But you're right. Up until that point, they were a port house, but they did great ports. All yeah. the way, all the way up until the Knights of the Old Republic port, where they <laughs> the whole game was fucking broken and you couldn't get past a certain point. <laughs> right. Uh, so, which to be fair to them, uh, the game was also broken at launch uh, on the original Xbox, but they fixed it, so they should have been able to fix it here. Um, what's interesting though is that Aspire is owned by the Embracer Group, who own just. So many fucking video game companies, man. They own uh, Gearbox. They own uh, Koch Media, who owns Deep Silver. Um, They own Saber Interactive, who own companies like 3D Realms, Aspire, uh, and various others. THQ Nordic. Uh, I believe Embracer Group were also the people who bought all of those Square Enix companies that they sold, like Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal. So... They're not starving for game developers. I'm surprised they didn't go to one of their sister companies to be like, yo, help us here. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Well, well, it it seems like they were given it. They wanted the opportunity to try something big for themselves. Uh, They took it. They were allowed to do it. And uh, they made something, showed everybody. And everyone was like, what? This is not good. (laughs) Yeah. So they had to reevaluate it and change some things. So, uh, uh, I mean... I'm glad they were given the opportunity. They got to make some changes now. And yeah. it's it's probably delayed for the best. I bet you that had some major problems. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, next, we got Sega's Genesis Mini 2. will have one-tenth the supply of the original Genesis Mini. Yes. Uh, the Genesis Mini 2's availability in North America and Europe will be one-tenth of 2019's Sega Genesis oh, Mini. North America. Yeah. Uh, Friday's statement said that the Genesis Mini 2's original, sorry, the Genesis Mini 2 originally proceeded as a Japanese only product, but by using Amazon's Japan store system, we found that at least a small number of units could be sold via Amazon.com, so a portion will be allocated to the North American version. Uh, yeah, I have the, pre-ordered it, uh, and okay. I'm doing that. I'm getting it so yeah. from Japan, but on the American, uh, uh Amazon. It was all. It was always weird when they announced this because it was announced as a Japanese uh, system. Then eventually they announced it will be available in North America, but only through Amazon, only through Amazon, and only through Sega's Amazon Japan uh, right. store through North America. And it was going to be um, very expensive for what this device is. Uh, with shipping from Japan, it'll cost as much as one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was very th- like it's a very bizarre route that they're going with this, and they're saying it's due to the semiconductor shortages um, in the global supply chain. So maybe that's true. 
Um, but one tenth the supply of the original, like that's crazy to me. I, I mean, how I much? Expected, how much did the original sell? I expect it to not sell too much, especially from Sega. These sort of classic consoles are like a little boutique thing. Uh, yeah. The original had a lot of mainstream games. This one has a lot of B sides. Uh, right. And also, it's a kind of a pain in the ass to purchase for us Americans. So I yeah. understand allocating not that many to us. Uh, anyway, how can you quickly summarize Microsoft Negs Activision Blizzard to push through? 68 easily billion dollar uh so as we all know microsoft is trying to buy activision blizzard um they're going through all the government uh proceedings now in many countries not just the united states and several countries including brazil and new zealand have brought up questions of whether or not this creates a monopoly and even uh sony when filing with brazil uh called call of duty an essential game and a triple a title that has no rival has no rival it argues the franchise is so popular that it influences the consoles people buy. This is important. So Sony has said in a public filing that they are nervous about uh, Microsoft purchasing Activision Blizzard because they are afraid it's going to take Call of Duty away from uh, PlayStation owners. They're going to take that option away from PlayStation owners. Microsoft's response to all of this, why they think it's okay to buy Activision Blizzard, there is nothing unique about the video games developed and published by Activision Blizzard that is Holy a must-have for rival PC and console video game distributors that give rise to a foreclosed concern. So basically what they're saying is, there ain't nothing special about these games. <laughs> That's insane. That is that, that, that a company is going to spend $70 billion yes. and then be like, nothing crazy about these things. Yeah. Ah, whatever. Just <laughs> whatever. Just it's a not, you know, look, this, this ain't that big of a deal. Just my seventy billion dollar company making do, dumb, stupid shit. <laughs> yeah. It's like buying a. It's like buying like a like a rare Ferrari, being like yeah. nothing special about this thing. You want to take it for a spin? I don't even give a shit. <laughs> I mean, for a, for a long time, my like during the three hundred and sixty era, uh, Microsoft had exclu exclusive early rights to Call of Duty DLC. And all the marketing for all the Call of Duty games in that era were 360 focused. So like whenever you see a TV ad for a Call of Duty game during that time, it would say, play it on Xbox 360. Um, that changed in the PS4 era when Sony spent a lot of money to get the license switched over. So all Call of Duty commercials on TV said, play it on PlayStation, get the DLC first on PlayStation, all things like that. So Sony knows the power of Call of Duty. Uh, they know how much yeah, they know because they spent a lot of money to get that power. So that's when people think Call of Duty, they think PlayStation Four. Uh, and here's Microsoft saying like it's not that big a deal. It's just it's just <laughs> the fucking game. Give us the company. It's like who cares? <laughs> I, I, I also I, I should add I should add that Sony has tried many times to create well if not a Call of Duty killer but a Halo killer, and none of them reached the level of those games. Uh, Resistance didn't. Killzone didn't. I'm sure I'm missing another one, but yeah, try as so they might. They they can't make a Call of Duty. I think Sony has been between the fight, the fight between Sony and Microsoft. Uh, Sony has been the most vicious. Uh, yeah, and and they, they got nothing to bitch about. Um, but I think mostly what Microsoft is saying is that uh, it's not worth uh, using. Uh, Call of Duty or any games that Activision Blizzard has as as a a, a, a nuke against Sony. It's not worth it's not worth keeping that keeping it from Sony. Like it's not going to benefit them that much. So they're like, we don't give a yeah. shit. Whatever. I, and uh, they have said in the past that they like they plan on keeping Call of Duty multi platform. Uh, yeah. It will come to PlayStation. Uh, and even with Sony's uh, acquisition of Blizzard. They've said that future Blizzard games will still come to like other consoles. Right. So we live in a very different world where, um, you know, just because a company, a console maker owns a studio doesn't mean we won't see that studio's games on other platforms now, unless you're Nintendo. 
Uh, that said, they bought uh, Bethesda. Microsoft bought Bethesda, and Starfield is coming to Xbox exclusively. So true. Well, that that's a good point. That's kind of yeah. a huge deal. Uh, last news: U.S. games are spending a lot less on video games now that they did in 2021. I saw this. This is specifically for Call of Duty. Uh, no, this is overall U.S. customers uh, spend spending on video game products has fallen by 1.78 billion in Q2, according Holy to shit. a market research firm NPD. Uh, did you know that NPD is on Long Island? I did not know that. They are actually they're in Port Washington, walking distance from where I used to work. Oh my god! So I probably walk past their office. On, you know, when I used to go for lunchtime walks when I worked in Port Washington. That's awesome. I had That's no idea. That's insane to me. I had no idea either. Anyway, uh, overall spending in the video game, uh, in video gaming in the U.S. Uh, totaled at $12.35 billion in a recent quarter, down 13% year over year. The findings follow both Microsoft and Sony reporting revenue declines in gaming as the pandemic, as the pandemic growth slows. Uh, Sony warned of a weaker PlayStation business earlier this week as it saw uh, game software sales plummet 26% year over year. Sony blamed the slump on a lack of big PlayStation titles this year compared to 2021 and less time spent playing games in general. Microsoft's Xbox hardware revenue dipped 11% year over year in its recent quarter alongside a 6% drop in Xbox content and services uh, service revenue and a 7% decline in overall gaming revenue. Nintendo is due to report its fiscal first quarter earnings on Wednesday, but the company forecast earlier this year that it expects to sell 21 million Switch consoles for its fiscal year that ended in March, down from 23.1 console, 23.1 million in the previous year. While overall spending on gaming has certainly declined across the industry in Q2, subscription content ha- was the only segment that saw positive, uh, post-positive gains. Uh, that growth is despite Sony launching its revamped PlayStation Plus subscription at the end of the quarter. Hardware units, uh, hardware unit sales were also led by Switch in the second quarter, uh, with PlayStation 5 generating the highest dollar sales, despite the declines in spending amid high rates of inflation and following the big period of growth. Uh, consumer spending continues to trend above pre-pandemic levels, uh, says Matt Piscatella, games analyst at MPD. Uh, however, unpredictable and quickly changing conditions may continue to impact the market in unexpected ways in the coming quarters. So uh, I think it's interesting that Nintendo expects to sell that many Switches. Like, like uh, yeah. c- th- almost as many as last year. Yeah. Which is crazy because they're like kind of winding down on this on the Switch generation. Uh, I think it's, I mean, it's not surprising at all that gaming is down from last year. Last year was insane because of the pandemic. And also we all got like stimulus checks and stuff. So like it was, you know, people had money to spend and time to burn on gaming and, and we needed some comfort, you know, this year we don't have any money. We don't have any time anymore. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, and, and also global, uh, 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 not global, uh, 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 fucking recession there's a recession yes recession uh so yeah of course nobody's gonna have any money anymore you, yeah. you're never gonna hit the numbers that you hit last year that's never gonna yeah. happen but also, I mean, also the recession yeah also like what sony said uh there haven't been a number of like big playstation titles available this year and that's true like across the board um there's been like a slump in like high profile releases Across all platforms. Yeah, you get a couple here and there, but there's no like Animal Crossing. There's no Last of Us Part Two. There's no Guardians of the Galaxy even. There's nothing like that to like entice people like there like there were in previous years. Right. Uh I mean there's a lot of good games this year, but uh things have been slowing down because everybody's having a hard time releasing stuff. So Yeah. Uh yeah, that that makes total sense. Uh, right now, we gotta talk about the tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. This is one of it's our one of our favorite people. Will yes, Heidi Okojima. I haven't worn sea pants in four years, and then a bunch of emojis. <laughs> Here he is with his sea pants. That's beautiful. Uh, I also have Koji. 
I also haven't worn sea pants in a really long time. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start calling them sea pants. I'm for sure calling them sea pants from now on. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to read all of the comments or the comments that we picked from last week's Wolf Den podcast. And while I do that, yes, we have some things to unbox. Yes, we do. So I will get those. And I will read. Uh, last week's Wolf Den podcast, we got Ian Quinn who says the live action. What the fuck? R- oh, R- 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 Roni Kenshin. R- Roni Kenshin. Movies are actually good. They broke the live action anime curse. Unfortunately, it is a monkey's paw wish because the m- manga mangaka have revealed to be an awful, sick individual a year after the third movie released. What? Okay. Uh, Sounds like some weeb stuff. Sounds like some nerd shit. Uh, Eric Payne says, I played base Sword and Shield last and I was over it by the time I finished it. Didn't even consider the DLC at all. Pokemon is Pokemon and I'm kind of over it. I agree. New Pokemon isn't enough to make me care anymore. It's the same every time, and I can't be bothered anymore. I agree. I yeah. completely agree. Uh, uh, yeah, what do you got there? Will we? So I got the first thing. Uh, this is from Matt, Whoops. and it's uh, Whoops. It's a DS Lite with a bunch of stickers on it. Oh, it's uh, Thrill House. Thank you, Thrill House. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait. Th- oh, wait. Oh, so wait. There. So the reason he sent that is very important. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Okay. It's broken. Uh, the top. Okay. Sc- the top screen, uh, or or the top screen was suspected to not work, but I think it worked. Uh-huh. It like kind of works. But okay. I want what I, I. Everybody keeps telling me to do the stupid DS Lite mod where you rip the top screen off. Oh, and make it like a Game Boy Advance. Yeah, the Game Boy Macro yeah. mod. But I don't yeah. want to cannibalize a fully working DS Lite. Got it. Uh, so he gave me one that's uh, a little broken. Nice. Also, also I have a rose-colored DS Lite, and it doesn't have the stylus. So he gave me the stylus. Thank you very much, Little House. Nice. I appreciate it. All right. Was there more stuff in there? Yeah, there's like uh, two more things. Uh, in- I got something from uh, two boxes from Deckmate. Oh, these are different people. Okay. Okay. The hell's deck mate? I don't know. Well, let's open them up and see. And then I got uh, one more big box. All right. Well, we oh, also have... Keep reading. Ow, stab myself. <laughs> we have... I actually, did... Lift... I actually did stab myself. I'm bleeding now. You're a fucking idiot. We got Lifted Lightning who says, I got hit by an ad right at the time he said Tweet of the Week. And so I thought anime music was the Tweet of the Week for a minute. <laughs> And we got Gligar guy who says, is it possible for Bob to just accept Pokemon isn't for him? This is like the 10th time this year alone he's complained Pokemon isn't tailor-made for him. This is kind of getting sad at this point. Uh, listen, man, I'm fully aware of when a game isn't for me. And also, when a game could be better for the people that it's for. Uh, so these two things for Deckmate are for you and Wood. <laughs> Oh, wait, yes, yes, don't open that. Save that. Okay. We will t- right. we'll just keep that. That is something we got to talk about. <laughs> okay, okay, oh, okay. All right, so I got one more big thing that I'm going to open, so keep reading. Okay. Uh, last thing is uh, Jorge Rego, who says, Man, did no one in the stream warn Bob that Jedi Fallen Order is a Souls game like Kirby? Can't wait for that stream. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to stream it. There's uh, no, that's not a stream yet. Did you well last in last week's podcast I uh yeah. purchased Jedi Fallen Order for Steam for 15 bucks. Nice. Look yeah. at you. Wait, you never you never owned the game? No. Really? Now I can play it on my Steam Deck. Yeah. I know it's a that... Souls-like game, but it's not like Souls games, you know? It's 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 not yeah. the same. No, it's... it's not the same sort of combat. And uh, well, it it's is, also it, it's like it's because you dodge roll and stuff and I you go to the. Yeah, I like dodge rolling. I like that. What I don't like about Souls games is when you fucking hit the button and it takes four years for the action to happen. Yeah. And also for the random bullshit that just kills you like random. Like, yeah. like you never would have seen coming. Yeah. 
Um, so this is from Tom Talk. Yes. It is a very fancy case, I believe, for your Nintendo Switch. I'm assuming it's for the Switch. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I believe so. Okay, this way. So you back. you can uh, you got the shoulder strap in case you want to look cool. Back up a uh, little bit. Okay, I'm backing up. No, I mean like push your whole oh. seat back so we can see what the freaking thing is. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Oh, it's like a little like a little sling thing. I like that. Yeah. Uh, I I on. want I've been wanting something like that that's like kind of like a bag for your switch carts. Good, I'm gonna throw that right out. I don't need that. Oh, uh, it's so it's like expandable, like here, and mm -hmm. it's got padding here, so you can fit like your switch and your accessories. I, I I've been wanting something like that that's like a small little sling, so I don't have to have a whole ass backpack with me all the time. Yeah. It's like a nice camera bag, says S. Marcy. That is a great idea. Yes, it is It'll basically a nice camera. camera bag for your Switch. You can hold your Switch, uh, a couple of accessories, your phone, uh, maybe a portable battery if you need or, to carry around some of those. Or a camera. Yeah. So there you go. That's it? That's everything? That's it. That's everything. Wow. All right, we're in the chat real quick. Uh, All right, oh, thank you, Tom people. Talk and Thrill House, then. Yeah. Um, Bob, make a clicky ASMR channel on YouTube with nice aesthetic. I feel like you, the man for the job. Thanks. But that's another thing that I got to do then. Oh, uh, we also angry Eric with 15 months. Bob, yeah. I don't know if it's your styling or your shampoo, but your hairline and hair looks so much healthier. Oh my God. It's definitely <laughs> lighting. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no, I got a haircut. Uh, like a week and a half ago. Uh, Mimi memes with the 25 months. Thanks for the content and company, boys. Also, in Japanese, they call the pants Kojima was wearing umipan, which is direct translated sea pants. I assume that it was something like that. Yeah. Uh, and look, we agree that's a better term for them than bathing suit. Yeah. Uh, Luke Antone, Will. Oh, will you bring back playing with subs? I need my Smash rematch. Probably. I'll probably do that. It becomes a whole thing. I don't like doing a whole thing when I stream. You know, I like relaxing. Um, uh, are you worried that uh, Sony might increase the price of the PlayStation 5 or their upcoming VR headset after Meta increased the price of their VR headsets? I think um, the, I think Sony's VR headset is just going to be expensive. I think yeah, it's, I don't, it was always going to be I don't think expensive. they're going to increase the price of the PS5 per se, but I think they will definitely make up for that difference in PSVR and any other accessories that uh, they might have in the pipeline or certain games that they might have coming out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, cause I think like they, they already established the price of the PlayStation 5. They probably won't make it go up, but they will find ways to make up for that difference. Um. Um, uh, I don't know what S. Marcy was referring to when he said this, but I, he said, I mean, a lot of your favorite artists are into some fucked up shit. Doesn't mean, doesn't keep me from enjoying the art. What is, I don't remember what the <laughs> hell we were talking about. Oh, um, me, uh, Mimi Meme said that the, uh, the creator of Roni Kenshin was arrested for possession of child pornography. Oh, I mean, it's 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 a really it's a really hard thing to navigate. Like, obviously, yeah. I don't want to support shitty people, which is why we didn't play Gearbox games for a while. But then yeah. everybody becomes shitty. You hear all these different things about all these different companies. You can't boycott them all. And like, Michael Jackson always made great music. <laughs> <laughs> you know I, what I mean? I think. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's like the go-to. Um, there's a, you know, I've always loved the philosophy that if, if you, if you don't hear or see what their, you know, you know, what, the, what their problematic, what their problematic aspect is in their work, then it's easier to separate art from artists, you mm -hmm. know, like, uh, like what's, what's a good example, uh, of of there being problematic stuff in the art, yeah. So like, 
like Frank Frank Miller is a good example. I was I was so, thinking I was thinking Frank Miller. <laughs> so like Frank Miller Frank Miller is is a crazy man. He's a is a crazy right leaning man. Uh, his work on like Daredevil doesn't really you know reflect what his current political leanings are. His work on stuff like Three Hundred and uh, Holy Terror and certain even some of his Batman work. Yeah, it does kind of lean kind of a, uh, you know, Alex Jonesy in some some ways. So that's what I mean by like if if their views are like reflected in the art that they produce. So yeah. uh that's what I mean. On the other hand, you could just have like some things that just like make you uncomfortable. Like if you're uncomfortable supporting a pedophile, yeah, I don't I don't blame you for not reading a Roni Kenshin. I also don't blame you for being uncomfortable supporting a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Robbie flips. Hello, Robbie says, Bob, how come my girlfriend was watching Nintendo TikToks and I heard your voice from the other side of the room? Because uh, <laughs> surprise, motherfucker. I was I, I'm on TikTok sometimes. Uh, there's one that blew up the other day, which is me uh, shit talking our dad for something he never did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I got to find that. It's just it's just me and Wood are arguing about Mario Party. Yeah. And he's like, it's a fan. You know, I'm talking about how it's a dumb game and that people get oh, stars right. for yeah, dumb I, shit. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. And he, and he says, well, what if you, it's a family game? And I was like, I don't give a shit if it's a family game. And he's like, what, what, if, what if you want to play with your dad or something? And I said, I don't give a shit if my dad <laughs> sucks at the game. I don't want him winning the game. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Circa X, did you find any good podcasts? Well, I've been looking more options as well uh yes thank you to everybody who gave me podcast suggestions on sunday when i was going to mow the lawn um i didn't listen to any of them <laughs> instead i found uh i'm gonna listen to some of the ones you recommended eventually uh i found a podcast it's on the earwolf network it's called get played it's actually a very fun um video game conversation podcast uh they were talking about the 20th anniversary of super mario sunshine and they like that game less than we liked it because <laughs> we talked about it on our podcast wow. too. And we were much nicer to it. Uh, anyway, uh, I got to pee. So the show's okay. over. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. <laughs> yes. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden podcast. So go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. I just got a notification on my phone that says I have an incoming shipment from Trade. Let's go. Oh. Not a sponsor of the podcast. Uh, guys, I got a lot of work to do. I will have a video up on Thursday about the Analog Pocket update. I'm going to put it through its paces and we'll see how it is. Um, Nintendo podcast will be this week. We might do it on the Pokemon thing. Oh, we didn't oh, that's talk right. about There's that a at Pokemon all. Thing. There's a Pokemon thing tomorrow because we're not allowed to cover Pokemon on this show. Yeah, we also, I just don't really care that much. But I think it'll make, it'll make for a good Nintendo yeah. podcast probably uh or maybe we won't do that i don't know uh plenty of content here with my stupid face in it uh anyway thanks for being here everybody and we'll see you later goodbye bye oh, i forgot to raid somebody <laughs> say, stay say hi to whoever i'm raiding right now <laughs>